Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today we start Unit 21, Conservatism. And our topic is Conservatism, its characteristic features. The desire to conserve the words which Edmund Burke used is the underlying theme of conservative ideology. Though it is not the sole objective which conservatives of all shades seek to attain. Authoritarian conservatism has often been reactionary. It either refuses to yield to change or attempts to turn the clock back. Revolutionary conservatism may use the term radical conservatism and tends to regain or re-establish or argue for a conservative fabric of revolutionary character. The characteristic features of conservatism as evolved in different forms and conveying the fundamentals of conservatism can be identified history and tradition. The role of history and tradition is basic to any type of conservatism. History reduced to its essentials is nothing but experience. It is deductive thought in matters of human relationship. Legitimacy is the work of history. To see things authentically as a conservative, Manham writes, is to experience events in the past. To history is expressed not in linear and chronical fashion, but in the persistence of structures, communities, habits and prejudices, generation after generation. The correctness of history or of experience, for that matter, is a persisting conservative emphasis. This has been shown by Burke, Ruki, Oxford, and Walkin, to mention a few. Social reality can be understood through a historical approach. We cannot know where we are, much less where we are going, until we know where we have been. That is the bedrock position of the conservative philosophy of history. History is represented in traditions and traditions constitute an important component of history. As such, a central theme of conservatism is, with regard to history, its defense of traditions, its desire to maintain established customs and institutions. Burke was talking about the tradition when he conceived of society as a partnership between those who are living, those who are dead, and those who are to be born. Tradition is, Chastron says, a democracy of the dead. In this sense, tradition reflects the accumulated wisdom of the past. The institutions and practices of the past have been tested by time and should the conservatives demand. Be preserved for the benefit of the living and for the generations to come. Point is human imperfection, prejudice and reason. Conservatism is the philosophy of human imperfection. The root of man's basis lay more in prejudice than in reason as against the liberals who think of human beings as moral, rational 
and social. The conservatives regards men both imperfect and unperfectable. Human beings, the conservatives believe, are dependent creatures, always fearing isolation and instability, and therefore always seek safety, security, and what is familiar, ready always to sacrifice liberty for social order. By their very nature, the people, the conservatives would say, are suspicious of abstract ideas and prefer to ground their ideas in experience and reality. They have usually an already framed view evolved from the past, a prejudice made framework. Prejudice misfits argue for the conservatives has its own instinct wisdom, one that is anterior to intellect. Prejudice is of ready application in the emergency. It previously engages the mind in a steady course of wisdom and virtue and does not leave the man hesitating in the moment of decision, skeptical, puzzled and unresolved. Reason stems from knowledge that is learnt than imparted. The conservatives of, of the opinion that Imparted knowledge leads to abstraction, abstract knowledge, and for human beings, it is too complicated to be fully grasped. Learned knowledge is rooted in experience and is limited to the doing of something, to the learning of something through committing mistakes. Such a knowledge is not knowledge of rules and generalization, but is one that comes from one man's experience and goes down in the blood of the other. Reasons as knowledge of this time is not a cure worse than the disease, but is one that eliminates the disease. Next point is organic society, liberty and equality. The conservative view of society is an organic view of society. The individuals do not and cannot exist outside society, but they are rooted in society and belong to it. They are parts of social groups and these groups provide the individuals' lives with security and meaning. The conservative's view of liberty is not leaving the individual alone, but is one where there is willing acceptance of social obligations and ties. For the conservatives, liberty is primarily doing one's duty. When the parents, for example, advise their children to behave in a particular way, they do not constrain their liberty, but they are providing a basis for the liberty the children would enjoy when they grew up. The conservative view of liberty is neither atomistic nor rootless. It is the enjoyment of rights together with the performance of duties, either before or after or both. Conservative view of society is one that is a living thing, an organism whose parts are neither equal nor the same, work together and make the human body function properly. 
each part of the organic body organic society that is family government a factory plays a particular role in sustaining and maintaining the health of society he would explains if society is organic its structure and institutions have been shaped by natural forces and its fabric should therefore be preserved and respected by the individuals who live within it the conservative view of organic society is a unity composed of diversity such a society is always in a hierarchical form where alone liberty works effectively and with a meaning in such a socially differentiated society organic as it is equality has no place most forms of equality seem to the conservative to threaten the liberties of both individual and group liberties which are inseparable from the built-in differentiation variety and variable opportunities burk dictum in this context is those who attempt to level never equalize next is authority and power authority and power in the sense they used have much in common for a conservative power is used by one who is authorized to exercise it and it is the legitimate act to get what one wills in an organic society order has to be maintained so power is an essential component of an organic society in an hi- hierarchical system there are different levels so authority became necessary power and authority are the important concepts in conservative philosophy the in no sense constitute an obstacle to what the conservative think about liberty the liberty book said i mean is a liberty connected with order that exists not only along with order and virtue but which cannot exist at all without them the conservatives believe that authority like society develops naturally power emerges from functions authority and power the conservatives strongly feel develop from natural society these are natural because they are rooted in the nature of society and all social institutions within school authority or power is and in fact should be exercised by the teacher in the workplace by the employer and in the society by government the conservatives say that a thought is necessary because it is beneficial as everyone needs the guidance support and security of knowing where the people stand and what is expected from them that is why all the conservatives emphasis leadership and discipline leadership he would says is a vital ingredient in any society because it has the capacity to give direction and provide inspiration for others discipline is a willing and healthy respect for authority no conservative believes in equality in social equality at that they think that people are born unequally 
in the sense that talents and skills are distributed unequally. Unequal should not be treated equally. The conservatives believe that inequality is more deep rooted. Genuine social equality for the conservatives is therefore a myth. Conservatism adores power in so far as it helps establish order in the society. It admires authority because it is authority through which order is established in the society. Conservatives favor an authoritarian and all-powerful state. Public order and the moral fabric of society can be maintained through the power and authority of the state. Haywood writes, Furthermore, within conservatism, there is a strong paternalistic tradition which portrays government as a father figure within the society. Next to point is property and life. Property for conservatives possesses a deep and mystical significance. The conservatives hold the view that property has a range of psychological and social advantages. It provides security, gives people a sense of confidence, promotes social values. As such, the conservatives want that property must be safeguarded from disorder and lawlessness. They say that property owners have a stake in society. They have an interest in maintaining law and order. Property ownership promotes the conservative values of respecting the law, authority and social order. A deeper and more personal reason, he would write, why conservatives may support property is that it can be thought of almost an extension of an individual's personality. People realize themselves, even see themselves in what they own. It is the contempt work road for property that has led to all the other evils which have received France, the French Revolution 1789 and brought all Europe into the most imminent danger. Conservatism advocates the sanctity of property in the heart of every true conservative, there is an Russell Kirk writes persuasion that property and freedom are inseparable, connected, and that economic leveling is not economic progress. Separate property from private possession and liberty is erased. Irving Babbitt added, every form of social justice tends toward confiscation and confiscation when practiced on large scale undermines moral standards and in so far substitutes for real justice the law of cunning and the law of force. Next is religion and morality. Conservatism is indeed unique among major ideologies in its emphasis on religion and morality. Irrespective of denomination, all the conservatives include Hegel, Heller, and Clarices made religion 
and therefore morality a key note of state and society. The conservative support for religion and morality rests on the well-founded belief that human beings, once they get adrift from major orthodoxy, are likely to suffer some measure of dearrangement of loss of equilibrium. Religion Burke wrote to his son is man's fastness in an otherwise incomprehensible and thereby hostile world. Chokwell before his death bed confession described the value of religion and morality to government and society and to freedom. When there is no longer any principle of authority in religion any more than in politics, men are speedily frightened at the prospect of unbounded independence. For my part, I doubt whether men can ever support at the same time complete religious independence and entire political freedom. And I am inclined to think that if faith be wanting in him, he must be subject. And if he be free, he must believe. Religion is a spiritual phenomena, but at the same time it is an essential social cement as well. For the conservatives, there exists a close relationship between religion and conservatism. For religion provides society a moral fabric. Here we want to wind up this lecture. Thank you so much for your attention.